Let's talk about the Android SDK. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to another SAP Code Talk. And I'm pleased to have Josh Bentley with me. Josh, we met, uh, or should I say, I introduced you to the Code Talk audience a while ago with some of the other new evangelists. But thank you for joining me one on one today. Thank you, Ian. Good to see you again. And the subject is the SAP Cloud Platform SDK for Android. So, yeah, I've got Correct. that right. I've been practicing because I usually uh, say something different. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I've got to say, you're one of our evangelist team, and you're you, you are covering this. Uh, and I know that you guys are doing lots of blogging. And I saw a recent blog from you. Uh, but can you give everybody a little uh, introduction to what that blog is all about? So I did a recent blog actually uh, about the right tool for the right job, and this is something that surprisingly to me got over 400 views in less than a couple of weeks because it was really just a personal reflection at the start of the new year doing a project uh, at uh, home, building some stages for a show that was being put on in our local synagogue. And we went through the process of having to have people with impact drivers and, and wrenches and saws and all these different tools. And I didn't have enough of the proper powerful tools to use wireless drills and other things. And it's frustrating. You have to go get an electric cord and pull it out. And you don't have the right drill bits or the right you know, Phillips head screwdriver bit. And it just got me thinking about how Cloud Platform, as you just mentioned, we had a very long name for this one particular tool that we're using to develop on the second or first most popular enterprise operating system at your company. Mm -hmm. So depending on where you work, I mean, Android's the number one operating system in the world, but Apple iOS is a very popular operating system as well that people develop for mobile. Those are two very small pieces of a very large puzzle that SAP Cloud Platform includes. And I was thinking to myself, wow, there's tools for building things. And if you use the right tool, you can get your job done quickly and correctly. So when you're building a stage, if you're doing mechanic work on your car, whatever the case is, if you're trying to use something that's either antiquated or it's not quite right, or you're, you're just looking at the process going, I think I can get by with using this tool. If I just, you know, squeeze it a little harder, maybe these wrenches will work. Mm -hmm. But if you went and bought the right electric wrench, you wouldn't have to work quite as hard. And it's an investment. And that's where we get back to the return on investment. You spend a little money up front, you get the right tool, and you can actually produce something that works quickly in the end, and it's repeatable. And it, I just literally, when I look at these analogies, I love doing that. I could maintain 40 cars, even though I'm not a mechanic, because I have a lot of ni nice car tools. Did I need to buy those? No. But when I was working on my own car, it was very frustrating when I didn't have the right tool for the job. So that's what I do with the cloud platform. I try and use that analogy and say, look, if you're going to build for mobile, you don't want to use SAP's tools? Fine, have at it. But we partnered with Google. So we went to them and asked them how to write stuff for Android. And they came back and gave us their best practices. And we coupled that with things like our Fiori coding language for the interface to really the 21st century way to access SAP is to use the Fiori front end and the Fiori language. And so we combined those together. And when you do something like that for our end users that are already SAP customers or looking to get into SAP, and they go, oh my God, you actually use Google's code? You have an SDK written for that? That's amazing, you guys are ahead of the curve. So a native developer is gonna feel more comfortable using those tools. Okay, so a native developer using Android Studio and mm -hmm. using uh, the SDK for Android and a Fiori for Android, I guess, with an Android, right. Android um, sort of set of guidelines for design. Exactly, exactly. So we've taken the, the best practices from Google and combined them with the best practices from SAP. Okay, you mentioned the the Apple word earlier, and you know yeah. everybody knows I I do the the Apple side. But uh, so how uh, how is it different from the SDK for iOS? So the first major difference that you can point out is that any Apple developer is going to go with Swift, right? They're going to understand how the the embedded cocoa and all the things that went into building the iOS operating system work. And you can write a hybrid app that can run on an Apple device the same way that you can write a hybrid app that runs on an Android device. So is it different? Yeah, because with Android, you're going to be using Java or Kotlin as your language. And you're going to be writing for several different device types at several different versions. You may be using, you know, a Pi operating system or Oreo operating system from Android. And with iOS, you may be working on iOS version 10 or 11, depending on what kind of device you got running. It's going to be fitting a form factor, an iPad or, you know, maybe an iOS 
uh, phone. But with Android, you're doing the same thing. You're picking your landscape, you're picking your portrait, you're doing the same design principles. And the SDK is written specifically for those native languages. So I cannot use the SDK for Android and make it work on iOS, but it's connecting back, which is really key to the SAP cloud platform. So now your server side is talking to your client side. So we've enabled a quick path for people that want to develop server side language and talk to back end sources and homogenize that and make that a lot easier. So your front end, yeah, you're going to be playing in the sandbox that you enjoy. But if you want to have a developer that's Android connect to the same back end system that your iOS developers have already been connecting to for a year, now we have the same tool that we can put into their hands to make that easier. Does that make sense to answer the question? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I think I think that obviously the strength of the platform as a service, and then uh, the, the power of having the two operating systems, the two SDKs that are, are both utilizing that same core, is fantastic. And you know, you and I know, and we've had these discussions at TechEd's, and we'll come back to TechEd later in our conversation. You know that there's a lot of companies that just don't go down one route. They actually have a number of different devices out there. And I think, you know, we now have a perfect story, a perfect solution for these companies. Well, and we've, we've been iterating on this, right? It was the SAP mobile platform and from the days when Sidebase was acquired with the SUP system turning into SMP. And then we got SAP cloud services for mobile. And that really became the key was connect your mobile devices to a mobile cloud service. And it can start doing some of the heavy lifting. And we get into later some of the newer features that came out in this version of the SDK for Android. We can talk about what we're doing to make it easier for a mobile developer based on those cloud connections. Excellent. Well, let's actually get into that now. So uh, I know that there's actually a new release. I spoke to Britt a while ago and uh, we had like an introduction with him. So what's, what's really key and core to the new release for the SDK for Android? Yeah, I mean, there's so much that I could talk about, but I'll, I'll bring out two things that Britt and I actually went through, and he's built a couple of demo videos on YouTube that we can put out there later to the community. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about SAP's API management and a SAP's API Business Hub. These are connection sources that you can use now so that when you want to either monetize or track the volume of API connections that developers are using to connect to the back end, you can give through the Android SDK the connection when you're building an Android Studio, the API now as an endpoint, the SAP API Business Hub and API Management. So when you're clicking through and using the wizard, or if you're a really you know, savvy native Android developer, you'll know how to put that endpoint directly into your app. But now that becomes the connection point that you're gonna use through the SDK. So we've made it a lot easier to connect to the APIs. We also have uh, Fiori flows built in. We have uh, user blocking and data wiping, uh, new user interface controls, UI controls. Uh, we've got offline as a choice for OData. So look, you and I both know that online, the networks have grown. Britt said this a lot as well, that you can now go everywhere just about in the world and get you know that higher than 4G level LTE in America, we call it. It might be LTE globally. It's really nice to be online and have Wi-Fi or a really strong cellular connection, but that's not always the case. Even walking through buildings, you go through into a school or you go into a big grocery store and you're walking through and you lose your connection. And that's because of either the Wi-Fi signal is not strong enough. Maybe you were doing something. You were actually shopping and you're in your grocery store and you're walking along and you get a notification you need to approve something, a purchase order. That data is going to hit your device and it's going to be a local store. If that's an OData process in an SAP backend and you've now enabled through the SAP cloud platform the ability to use this Android SDK, your Android device will have an offline OData storage. So now you've copied down the data you need to process your work. And when you reconnect, it's going to go back to the network. So this is a traditional thing that we've always tried to solve with mobile, is how do you connect and give the user experience without the degradation when they get into an area where they've lost coverage? And so it's something that people wanted with OData. They wanted the ability to use our connections to the SAP backend system, but when there was a degradation in service, have an offline data store on the device. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. Uh, you mentioned Sybase a while ago, and obviously I came to SAP through the acquisition of Sybase, where I was the, the mobile evangelist there. And uh, and the, the Anywhere guys, which, you know, they're still in Waterloo in, in Ontario, Canada, uh, and uh, they were key with, you know, the mobile technologies and synchronization. And they used to have a phrase, and I'll, I'll try and get it right, otherwise we'll have to re-record it. It's up a pole, down a hole. And it literally meant, you know, you could be a, a technician where you could be up, you know, on a, a high 
uh, energy sort of pylon where you wouldn't get the signal. It'd be like in a Faraday cage. And then, or you could be down in, in the, a drain somewhere. You know, where, again, you wouldn't get signal, but you've still got to give that level of service. You're still got to be able to get some of that data which you may need or even store that data and then synchronize that back. So I'm totally in with you there, Josh. Uh, so yeah, there's tons of features. Uh, we can go through some demos later. Maybe you and I can revisit. Yeah, them. we'll recall. We'll, 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 sorry, we won't re-recall. We will actually do a series, and we'll have Josh uh, sitting there in his comfy chair to demo in some of this stuff to us. Yeah, we'll we'll to we'll talk about the comfy chair for a second. I'm relaxing <laughs> in what is in Philadelphia been extremely cold weather for us, as all of America is experiencing. And so I'm in here with a blanket over my legs, relaxing in my comfy chair and having a code talk with you. And that's one of the reasons that you and I get along so well on this team. Is really really a relaxed conversation. And uh, right now, I think it's almost 20 degrees Fahrenheit today. We're on our way up to oh, that's not bad. temperatures for the winter. But yesterday, a, a really interesting quote from the local news, we had a record high low. And that means that the temperature yesterday reached a level that was so low that it was considered a record high for that day. Oh goodness! <laughs> as a low, as a low. So it was like I think we we hit uh, the record low was two yesterday, something like that. Negative fifteen wind chill. Awesome. Well, let me take you back to comfier and warmer times because uh, last time you and I saw each other were at the Tech Eds, mm -hmm. uh, and I did see you at the uh, at the. SDK for Android section. So um, tell us what you were doing there and, and whether the folks can still enjoy that experience. No, it's a great point. You actually can. So Daniel Van Leeuwen has written a ton of tutorials. He's one of our product managers for the Android SDK. And he's just compiled not only amazing tutorials for TechEd, but in general with this SDK 2.0 release, he's compiled and updated a lot of our tutorials that are out there in the developers.sap.com site. And when you go through and you, you think of coming to a TechEd, you got tons of material to absorb. And one of the things that we did was had the developer garage area. And you could go in and actually play hands on with code at different areas with, you know, either using the HANA or using iOS, using Android. And at the SDK booth, we actually had a partnership with Google. We were talking about things with the Google guys there. And we had two machines. Uh, I'll talk about Bangalore real quick. We had two machines allotted uh, in, I want to say Barcelona. And we doubled that to four. And then we did the same thing. We had the four machines for Bangalore, and it wasn't enough. So we took all eight machines between the, the Google Cloud side that was for running HANA on Google Cloud and the Android SDK, and we compiled all eight machines to be versatile so we could actually flow back and forth. And those machines were filled almost the entire time with people going through these tutorials. Those tutorials are still out there, but you won't be able to receive credit for doing them at TechEd. Um, so you can go and find, if you look through the developers.sap.com site, the Android SDK tutorials that we wrote specifically for missions at TechEd. But again, I'd actually start to drive people more away from that content and to the new updated content that Daniel Van Leeuwen has written that is related to Android SDK 2.0 and any of the updated features. So enabling offline storage, for example, that's a tutorial that's out there that you can complete right now. Okay. So I'll make sure that... Uh that Josh actually comments uh, underneath the, the YouTube video. Uh, and in closing, I could I could go on for ages, but we're, we're in closing, uh, Josh. Uh, we don't I have saw, any other meetings to do, by the way. <laughs> I saw your blog uh, recently about the mobile badge, so maybe you can just talk about that for a second before we close. Cool, thank you so much for that. So yeah, uh, Britt Walmsdorf wrote that uh, blog. Uh, what happened was uh, a few of us that are in the mobile topic at SAP were looking at the community and seeing all these cool badges that you get for doing things, either you know completing tutorials or attending tech eds. And we know mobile is a super important topic. Let's, let's avoid the SAP word here and just say, in general, people use mobile devices everywhere. And we have people developing code. So if we combine the people developing code with their use of mobile, what if they're experts either within an SAP uh, job title, or maybe there's someone that's one of our value customers that is a mobile expert. We want to recognize that. So if you're out there and you're doing a great job and you're writing blogs or you're commenting, answering questions, we want to recognize you and we want to reward you for that. We've uh, looked at the people that did this in 2018 and awarded a little over 40 badges. And so there's 40 plus community members now that will have that tag associated with their profile. And if you see someone answering a question and it's, it's me versus Ian and you want to trust one of us more than the other, 
maybe you look and see if they have that mobile badge and go, this guy knows what he's talking about. And if you want to earn that in 2019, every quarter we've got algorithms running in the background and, and we're going to go through and say, hey, in April, if enough people have done enough activity, over, either tagged their blog primarily as a mobile uh, blog, and that blog post is something that's valuable to people and gets a lot of views and gets a lot of questions and gets a lot of likes and answers that are authenticated, that's going to elevate the author and the people answering questions. And we're going to do that every quarter this year to award a 2019 badge. Great idea. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for hanging out, let, let, allowing me to be in your 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 uh, study or um, what is, what's your word you had for it? You said that was your... Believe it or not, this room has several colored walls and, and the majority of them are pink. So we oh. call this the pink room. And also it's my music room. It's where I listen to my vinyl. That's where I drink my bourbon, drink my coffee. Uh, I've been known to maybe read from time to time, but after I'm listening to music and drinking bourbon, I rarely end up, end up focusing. Lovely. Well, thank you for allowing us some time with you, Josh. And we'll see you again on Co Talk with some follow ups. Looking forward to it, Ian. Thank you.